So today's conversation, I thought we will just chat from the beginning, from T equals to zero. Okay. And uh, let's talk about your childhood. You you said that you were adopted by a Chinese family. Yes. Right? Yes. So I want to know, how did that happen? How did you get to the point where you were adopted by a Chinese family? Okay. Um, according to my mom, mm-hmm. my mom, the lady who took me in, um, this is the story that she told me. She said that uh, her best friend happens to be a Chinese girl, which is my biological mother, happened to be her friend. And um, she uh, was with this Malayali guy, which is my dad. Mm. Okay. Uh, she remembered the word Malayali very well. You know, for a Chinese lady at that time, she can actually remember Malayali. So I know I'm 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 half Malayali. Okay, for sure. just like me. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> another common thing we have. She told me that um, they were good friends, and then uh, she knew about um, my mom and this Malayali guy were together and all that. She knew that she was pregnant and everything. So my mom gave birth to me, and then uh, after she gave birth to me, she went to see her, and uh, she told her that uh, I'll be back. Just take care of her for a while. And uh, I just need to go and grab some uh, baby stuff and then I'll be back. So my mom was like, okay. So she's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just take care of her. Of her. And um, she just didn't come back. Mm. And she just went and disappeared. And that was it. My mom, I mean, the Chinese lady who took me in, she didn't know what to do because at that point of time, she was, uh, she's married. Just married, and um, they were uh, also trying to conceive. You know, my mom married to a a, 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 a white guy. He's from Brit. Uh, Brit he's a British, yeah. Mm. So they were at the point they were they were trying and all that. And then she thought to herself, like you know, she couldn't find my mom. You know, there's no. She lost all contact. She couldn't reach out to her and all that. So she didn't know what to do. She just kept me at her house. Because uh, just two blocks away is uh, her father's house. So usually every Sunday, the family will get together at uh, my grandfather's house to eat. So she skipped uh, one Sunday and she skipped another Sunday. So that raised question on my grandfather, like, why is she not here for the dinner, you know? So I don't know what happened. Somehow my mother went and see my grandfather and the conversation was like, uh, I have a baby at home. So my my grandfather is like, what do you mean, you know? Uh, you know the girl, my friend, you know, she, she gave birth. She asked me to take care of her for a while. She didn't come back. So my grandfather is like, what are you hold, uh, having the baby for, you know? He's like, where am I going to put her? She's just a baby, just a few days, you know? So um, my grandfather asked her, so the baby is Indian. Then she said, yeah, she's Indian. No, not acceptable. So my mom was like, uh, okay, that uh, you are not bringing her into this family. So my mom went back. Of course, she said she was upset. But uh, she just didn't have the heart to put me else, elsewhere, right? So she still kept me. She kept me. And t- until uh, I think almost a month she decided to carry me, go to my grandfather's house. And he so happened he was actually sitting on his desk and he was doing his work. He's a businessman. You know, at that point of time, they have this, uh, the wooden calculate, calculation thingy, right? The abacus. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. That. So she, he was just doing his job. And then uh, my mom was like, uh, Pa, you know. Then uh, Kong Kong just uh, turned around and said, what? And he, she just put me on his lap. And that was it. Mm. I became his favorite. Mm. You know, he didn't want to let go. He gave me my name. So it's Larissa Lo Kim Moon. Um, you know, Chinese, you know, he, I mean, his surname is Lo. So he wanted me to carry his name Lo, right? And Kim Moon means in Chinese is Kam Moon. Kam Moon. Kam is like gold. Moon is like the moon chok, a, 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 a pot full of gold. Something like that. Very nice. Something yeah. along that line. So that's how my name came across. And that was it. Uh, I became his favorite in the family. Nice. Now, it, it must have been, I mean, how, 
what was the experience like uh, being an Indian child, being raised in a Chinese family? Uh, it was confusing in the beginning because I always wonder like why everybody color is different and why am I like this? And I used were you to, accepted easily? Except by my mom's sister, the third one. She was very unhappy. She was like, "Oh, how can she be a part of the low family? You know, she's just she's nobody. You know." So there was a lot of conflicts between she and my grandfather and my mom. I mean, she just she was just very unhappy about the life, and um. What happened was like, she tried. She tried to bully me. She tried, but my grandfather was always there. He always like, you know, um, he would scold her like, stop doing that. You know, she's a part of us. You know, that kind of thing. But um, things got worse after Kung Kung passed away because uh, he's old. He's eighty two. And he has lung infection and all that, so he he fought through. And after he passed on, that was when my hell start. Because I have no one to protect me anymore. You know, my mom who took me in, she's working, so she left me with my grandfather and grandmother. I mean, my grandfather has gone, and that's when the abuse start. I was being treated like a maid. I was not allowed to go to school. Uh, she used to, she used to beat me up, and she used to slap me until my face turned bluish. And because of that, uh, the mark on my face, she don't allow me to go to school because you know if I go to school, teacher is gonna ask like what happened, and if teacher know, they will report. You know, so she kept me. She kept me in school. I mean, kept me at home and all that. And basically, she just treated me like a maid, and everybody in the house is very afraid of her because she's just very loud and scary, you know. And uh, the family members they do know that she is treating me this way, but no one stood up for me. You know, I was just a little girl that was just being abused every. I was not allowed to eat. I can only eat after they are done. So basically, I have to serve everybody, and then once they are done, I have collect all the food. I have to wash everything, and then I have to sit on the kitchen floor to eat. Mm. You know, and because I didn't want to get whacking by her, so I just adapt to it. I became so used to it that. Whenever somebody give me food, I would just go to the kitchen and sit down and eat. You know. So things got really bad until um, she took. Uh, she she was very angry with me because I was late uh, serving dinner one night because I think I was not well, and so everything was late. You know, do you know how Chinese they will eat at six thirty that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So that day was a bit late. I think about seven plus. So she came back. She said the food was not served. She was, she was very angry. She took her this Chinese clock, you know, the Chinese one. She just hit my head, and she just threw me on uh, onto the fridge. So that was the day I realized that if I'm gonna sit here, either I'm gonna get killed by her, or I'm gonna kill her. Because I'm bigger, you know, I'm bigger. I'm no longer that little girl that she can always. Bully or abuse, you know. So I, I'm taller. I'm bigger. I I know I have that feeling of hitting her back. Mm. So, I really I tried talking to some of my auntie, but it just didn't help. They were like, "Ah, yeah, never mind lah. He's she's already just just do what she says." You know, like nobody hurt me. Nobody want to do anything for me. You know, and. I didn't have a choice but to run away. You ran away. I did. To where? I ran to Singapore. Okay. Yeah, it was. Uh, How old were you when you did this? I was about eighteen. 
19. So how long did you have to go through this abuse with her? Mm. I mean from her. Since what? 12. So for 6 years you went through this abuse yeah. and then you ran away to Singapore. I ran away, yeah. And and how I mean to to what? I mean what did you run away I to? I just did I I met a, a friend, I met someone and then uh, he was like uh he knows what I'm going through at home. And then he said, uh, "Why don't you come to Singapore? You know, um, maybe we can help you out, or maybe you can study here or something like that." Of course, to me, I, I I just wanted to do anything to get away from this woman, you know, because every day nobody wants to get beaten up every day, yeah. or nobody wants to be like, you know, you getting hair pull or you know, so many things. She would she would even just pour hot water on me, you know, like I just took in. I just took in and I knew that if I don't move away I will hit her. Mm. I will hit. Her. So I ran. And have you met her since? <gasps> She has passed on. Oh, okay. Uh now then then you go to um you you basically went through this for six years and I'm all, and I'm and I was when I was hearing about the the story I I I was thinking how did that affect you in 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 your development as an adult? How how It's bad. 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 I I I naturally I don't have any confidence in myself. You know, I'm always uh, I get I I cry for little things or I get anxiety attack. Mm. You know, I get that a lot. I will start to shiver. You know, and and at that point of time, a lot of people said, "Yeah, it's just normal. Like, everybody get through this. Everybody gets through it." But I don't think it's that. I should not take it so lightly because I still cannot let go of what she did to me till today, you know. Until like you know, um, three years back, my mother called me and said, um, "Your auntie passed on," and I was like, "Okay." I didn't feel anything, and I felt like I shouldn't feel like this, you know. I I'm not brought up this way. So, mm. so now that you, you you've become someone who is the person that you are now, right? Uh, you've 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 gone through a lot of trauma and 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 unspeakable and unimaginable trauma, I would say, and you've become this person that you are today. You're independent. You're successful with your home based business and all that. Um, what? How, how did you overcome that trauma to be to to free? No, I, I wouldn't say free yourself, but how did you overcome those demons to become the person that you are? Oh, this is pretty tough question. Actually, I am still trying to pick myself up. Till today, I'm still trying, and my 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 only way to get through my day is my children. Because I am no longer one person now, you know. They are watching me, and if anything happened to me, what's going to happen to them? Mm. So, to me, it's them. They are the one who keep me going. I still struggle, like I said. I still struggle. I still, I still not. I'm not out from that yet. You know, I I don't know how to take in a compliment. Till okay. today, yeah. because I'm always surrounded by people who say, "Uh, you are useless." You are you're not worthy. You you you, or you no. There's no way you can be successful. You know you you are nobody. You know you're just an orphan. You know what do you have? You don't know what is um, moral values. You don't know what family is. These are the words that I grew up mm. with, and it's actually very saddening when someone say that to you. It will break a person inside. Mm. You know because already I I'm, I'm I don't have somebody, and then on top of that you. Some other people like keep on saying that to you, you know. It it just destroy the person's inner self, you know. And to recover from that is re- is is tough. Mm. It's very very tough. That's why now because I have my own, so I'm very very careful and I'm very very protective over my family. Because I never got a mother's love, I never got a dad's love. The lady who took me in. She took me in. I'm very grateful she took me in. It's because she took me in. I'm here today, you know. But if you ask me whether she was a mother to me, no. Because I was 
literally grew up with my grandfather and grandmother. And after that, she was just working and I'm just left with them, you know. And my auntie started abusing me and she was never in my life. So if anyone asks me, I will say I raised myself. You know? Yeah. 